Thank you, Bryce and Choir, for always being flexible. <laughs> After a couple of weeks of different worship services, we were bound to uh, get something back in the wrong place. And thank you for uh, just hanging out for a second while we got things back in order. Uh, this morning, I wanted to talk about family prayers and meals. And so when we gather together at the Drake household, for the longest time we have sung a prayer that the girls learned in preschool and that uh, I learned at summer camp back in Georgia. And it goes kind of like this, God our Father, God our Father, we thank you, we thank you for our many blessings, for our many blessings, amen, amen. And for some reason, when Jamie was little, she liked to bounce her hands. And so we bounce our hands while we do it. Even when it's a 12-member family dinner, we all bounce our hands because that's how we do it. Uh, growing up, uh, my dad had a specific way that he ended family prayers. And I admit, uh, because the girls' prayer has taken over most of the time, I remember that it goes vaguely, we thank you for this food and the many hands that prepared it. That was kind of always the capstone of dad's prayers. Does anybody have memories like that or a prayer that they always say around meals? My dad always when he was talking about prayer, said, this to our use and us to our service. I love it. Bless, bless this to our use and us to thy, to thy service. That's a beautiful, beautiful ending. And I'm sure others of us have that as well. And when I was preparing for today, I came across a prayer that goes like this. It says, come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let this food be blessed. This comes often out of Lutheranism, as I learned from the very valid Wikipedia. Uh, it's called the Common Table Prayer. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let this food be blessed. And it's not said just at, like, fancy meals, perhaps the Lord's table or Thanksgiving, but it's said at any kind of common meal. So let's think about our tables at home. I will let you see behind the curtain a little bit at the Drake household. Uh, our table is a big square bar top level table. It's a hand-me-down. It's very sturdy and strong and has lots of leftover art project paint on it. It also has a Lego set that Jamie's been working on for a couple of weeks. It has a small TV with a vi vintage Nintendo set up on one side. Again, more leftover crafts, a forgotten dish towel that's not been taken up, the silverware from last night that did not make it to the sink. And all of that just kind of lives on our table and gets shoved around depending on how many people are eating with us each night. But come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. What does it mean to invite Jesus to a table like that? Think about your own tables at home. What would it mean to invite Jesus as is to sit at your table? Raise your hands. How many of our tables are clean? A little. We got a little back here. Come, Lord Jesus, sit at our table as is. Today, we're beginning a journey through parts of Genesis, hanging out with our patriarchs and matriarchs as they travel through the desert, going back to the very beginning of the Bible as we are in the beginning of the year. And we're starting with Abraham and Sarah granted kind of at the end of their story. When we're entering into hearing about them, they show up kind of right after the Tower of Babel, where God has shaken up a lot of things. And God speaks to them and says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. And so they travel as God tells them to travel through the desert, looking all around for that place that they can call home, they are promised a child that doesn't really seem to be coming. As we heard in the scripture, Sarah comments that she is older and some necessary functions in her body have stopped happening to her. 
but still they are listening faithfully to God. Right before our scripture, we hear that God has told all the males to be circumcised, and so it's really understandable that Abraham is taking it slow and relaxing underneath a tree. And so then when these visitors show up, he jumps up with haste. That's a pretty big deal. Hospitality is so ingrained in him that he still jumps up and goes to make these people welcome. Come, Lord Jesus. As Tomas kind of pointed out with our children, the scripture doesn't tell us right away that these are angels that have shown up, that possibly it's the Lord that has shown up. Abraham goes through the trouble of preparing a meal, not knowing who these people are, because it's not till verse 13 that the Lord speaks. That big reveal, that big surprise is brought out. The scripture also notes that Abraham goes over and above. At first he says, come and sit, I will get you a little bit of bread. But then when he goes to Sarah, he says, kill a fatted calf. Make some good bread with the good flour. And he brings out a whole banquet to these unknown travelers over and above for them. When we think about the times that God shows up in the Bible, it's big things usually. Moses and a non-burning, burning bush. Elijah's wind, earthquake, and fire. Jacob wrestling and having his hip displaced. Joshua seeing a vision with a sword. The people of Babel having their tower crash to the ground. A lot of times we think of God coming in with pomp and circumstance. Angels to shepherds, a star to magi. Wonder and awe. But then in today's story, God simply walks into camp. Come, Lord Jesus. A simple act turned deeply holy. Come, Lord Jesus. Some that may have heard the studies that exist about the importance of family meals on children. When families eat together, even a little time, a few times a week, children do better academically. They often have higher self-esteem, are more resilient, avoid drugs at a higher rate, less likelihood of eating disorders, depression, all sorts of benefits come from that. But I don't think that just applies to families with children. I think any of us who take time sharing a meal with others receive some of these benefits. When we dine downstairs together for our potlucks, our souls are filled along with our bellies. Relationships are deepened. Hope spreads throughout the week. There is magic that happens around the table and shared food. And so it's really kind of amazing that it's in the story today that God chooses to show up for a meal, sitting around a simple table, possibly even just a blanket in the desert, to share with Abraham and Sarah. Come, Lord Jesus. How do we make that space as well? taking an ordinary act of welcoming someone in to transform it into a holy moment, a God-filled moment? How do we make space for God to surprise us with God's presence in the world? Again, back to our little table, we do our bouncy song prayer, but now we're also having the girls say their own prayer each night. They take turns every other night. And they're not perfect, but they're working on it. They're practicing on finding ways to bring God into their lives so that it becomes natural and necessary and integral to their lives. Where do we do that in our grown-up lives? 
Where do we practice making space for God? Where do we take something ordinary and transform it into something special? I think we all practiced that last week. Last week when we packed over 10,000 meals to go out into the world, scooping and weighing and stealing and sealing and passing and packing and recounting to make sure we did them all right is ordinary work. There's nothing special about those tasks. But last week, there was something deeply special about those tasks. Because it fed people, body and soul. God was there with us in that gym. So how do we make space for God in moments like that? but also out in this busy, hectic, chaotic world? How do we prepare a place to welcome God into our plain, ordinary, everyday lives? What does that welcome look like? Is it clearing Legos off of a table? Is it preparing the best food? Is it welcoming someone new into our lives, keeping an eye open for those little opportunities to help light and love and hope break into the world. What does it look like to say, come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let this food be blessed? Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Come and fill us here, not just in this moment, but out in the world. Open our eyes for the little ways that we can welcome you, welcome others, welcome the stranger, so that all might feel the hope and love that are found in you, so that all may be fed, body and soul. In your name we pray. This morning, it's so great to see everyone here in the room, as well as the many people who stayed home and stayed warm on Zoom and later on YouTube. If there is anyone who this morning feels God stirring in their spirit and wants to join this congregation or wants to profess their faith anew, when we stand and sing, I invite you forward uh, with me. If any of you on Zoom want to join.